Hey y'all, how's it going everyone? Entropy here today with another video. Today we're going to be doing one last, I promise you, one last deck profile for set 7 as we move on to set 8. And this is the, I don't know, the, the spook of set 7, Zeal. Uh, if you wonder why this is the name I've given Mr. Zeal here, do check out my pack openings for set 7. I opened not 100, not 200, more than 300 packs for set 7, and the most often triple rare I've seen was Mr. Galactic Beast Zeal. Um, do I like him? You know, he's fun. Is it great? It's not great. It's it's honestly a pretty mediocre deck, but something that you should definitely not underst underestimate. So if you haven't really seen this deck in action before, definitely do watch the rest of this video. Uh, it will give you tips and tricks of what to avoid when you're playing against Zeal. And if you are a DP fan, if you are a Zeal fan, I think this is a pretty good deck. Um, we'll give you some tips into you know what you're trying to do and how I am approaching this deck. So I guess without further ado, let's begin. We're gonna play the Zeal starter. Zeal starter is really generic. Uh, when you ride the grade one, you can check top seven. For the grade two or grade three, if you, um, if you do have one of them, you get to add them to your hand. Um, and then if not, you get to call this out. If you did miss the grade one, you get to call this out as well. And this actually has quite more synergy in this uh, this build. You know, this ride chain has more synergy in this build than the others because every ride actually really does matter because you're basically, um, you get a bonus that is quite detrimental to your opponent's board state as well. As well, if you do miss the grade one or if you do miss the grade two or grade three uh, search, well, you get to call it out as a 5k booster, and the number actually does help since this deck doesn't plus in terms of you know draw power that much. And also, because it's zeal, its skill requires more units on your board to gain a bigger advantage state. And so definitely, calling it out is definitely not a very horrible situation to be in compared to some other decks, um, and still definitely does what you will zeal, um, that he zeal told me zeal to do. We play four of the grade ones, when it gets ridden by the grade 2, you get to minus 5k. The grade 2 does the same thing, and the grade 3 does the same thing. Um, and one thing that's unique in the zero format is that if your opponent's unit is less than zero attack, it gets retired. So this means that whenever you ride, when you ride the grade 2 on top of grade 1, if your opponent's you know, uh, starter is 5k or less, and it's still standing there, you can snipe it. Um, if not, if you want to choose to be more aggressive and hit your opponent's face if they don't have intercept set up, then you can reduce your opponent's vanguard's number, so then you have more uh, flexible number of units that can manage to hit your opponent's vanguard. We're playing four PGs, four, three second grades, second grades on place, minus 2k, um, and then the same thing if it's less than zero, it gets retired. Um, this card did get a rework from the TCG, um, and you know, this card's not the best. It's basically the inverse of six plus two, but again, because a lot of your retire skills is minus 5k, um, you know, if your opponent does have some you know, 7k grade 1s or 9k grade 2s, well, if you have two psychic grayish skills and one zeal skill, you're eliminating 9k or 7k and then you can retire them. I definitely do want to consider properly if that unit is important to be retired. And so this is definitely one of the things that stop people from playing it is because you really need to know what your opponent's deck is trying to do in order to play this deck well. And I can't say for sure that is the case for every single deck in this game. Next, we're playing two Commander Laurels. Uh, Commander Laurel, I'm not a really big fan of because it did get a substantial hit um, change from the TCG. Uh, before, if you did resend your Vanguard grade three, you get extra drive checks uh, and they go to your hand. Commander Laurel doesn't support that. It doesn't say standard and draw two. It doesn't say standard and draw one. It just says standard. Um, so definitely does hurt. Um, but since you're reducing your opponent's Vanguard's number with Zeal, the chance of you hitting your opponent restanding and still being able to hit numbers is higher, the likelihood is higher, and so Commander Laurel honestly has more synergy in Zeal than in Dimension Noble. Um, so yeah, I think it definitely does have a place in Zeal, um, and if not, then like, you can definitely replace it. It's not the best card. Next, we're going to play two Mikas. Mika is very important to this deck. You might even consider playing three. I'm playing two because Caramelast is quite heavy. You don't have any flippers in this deck, and you definitely do want to save some Caramelast to use your, your grade three zeal skill. When this card hits, draw a card, and this is important, again, because you don't really plus with this deck, right? You're decreasing your opponent's power, but you're not increasing your troops' numbers. 
Um, so being able to draw that extra card can definitely help you build up the board to use ZL more properly or get your other tools that you want to you know, play the game with. Next we're going to play three 10Ks. 10Ks are still you know, pretty good vanilla, yes, but they're costless, um, they have a good body, stats wise, um, and also you know, with a Dimension Robo name you do have some possible flexible plays. Uh, very circumstantial, so I really won't talk into it, uh, but it is there. It is better than the other Vanilla tank game. And lastly, we have the Assault Monster Gunrock. Gunrock skill is the same as Psychic Grey. So with you know 7 units that's on place minus 2k, you definitely have that flexibility with the number manipulation and can flexibly retire your opponent's units as well as sit your opponent's Vanguard's numbers. Next, we're playing 4 of the Great Fizil skill is Camel Master 2 to have all your, of your, all of your opponent's reverts get minus 1k for each of your opponent's uh, for each of your units, so with five rear guards and one vanguard, you're, you're minusing 6k, so very good uh, numbers. And then retire all of them with your zero less when hit persona blast to give uh, one of your opponent's units plus five. So, if assuming if you are using you know Zeal's first skill, right, you're minusing 6k, and then your persona blast well, you can persona blast and decrease your opponent's vanguard's number to help your next attack hit. Uh, if your opponent did hit the damage trigger, so that could you know, that could definitely help. Um, if not, you could then decrease an opponent's rewards number, you know, from minus 6k to minus 11k, and that should definitely eliminate most rewards in this game. Uh, so yeah, very nice. We're playing four Dimension Robo Dayusha as an alternate right target. Uh, it scales Camel Master 2 to get plus 2k. If you're really desperate, you can Camel Master 4 to get plus 4, so you can proc the second scale. When it's 14k or more, it gets plus 1 crit on attack. Um, and then lastly, the reason why we're really playing this card is not just because it's an alternate right target, but because it has a skill on, you can remove this from your hand to add, you know, one grade one or a grade two. You know, there's four options, you know, there are two of them are basically vanilla 7Ks in this deck. One of them is a 6K on place plus four to a dimension robo, so you can help then proc your Dayusha or, you know, boost your, your low die fighter to 14K. Or a die dragon, which is a nine nine plus three, um, and definitely you know an intercept nine k is definitely better than a ten k dead in your hand. We're playing four ten plus twos because well you sometimes do want to hit over that number. Um, you are generally re reducing your opponent's vanguard by five k or six k, and the lady justice twelve k on attacking vanguard definitely does help you hit over those numbers um, that you might need to reach. Uh, you know when your opponent's eleven k. And you know, with the low base power of your grade ones, on average, it's uh, 6k. Uh, the 10 plus 2 plus 6 18k number does help you hit cluster numbers, and it's very nice. Lastly, we're playing one Electro Star combination Cosmo Gray. Cosmo Gray is on the place Karma Master 2 to have one of your other units pet plus 4. Uh, unlike you know, cards like cards like uh, Die Battles, uh, it does not restrict you to getting the, 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 giving the plus 4 to a damage removal unit, which means that it can definitely help you set up your numbers more properly. Uh, but if you did write Dayusha, well, it's kind of must do to get plus 4 to proc the crit, uh, crit skill. Uh, and the reason why we're not playing 4 is because, again, ideally you're not writing Dayusha, ideally you're, you're writing Zeal, ideally you're using your Mikas to draw because you really are lacking in that draw department. And so the importance of Cosmo Great is not very high in this deck. But definitely still uh, deserves a one-off text score. So, I guess without further ado, let's play this damn deck that spooked me all, all pack of them. So I guess without further ado, let's go into a ranked fight for this video. Um, and I seriously hope that the, the footage um, is gonna, it's gonna save. So, hmm. yeah, I mean, for you DP fans out there, what is your favorite aspect of the clan, right? Some people really like heroes, some people really like the villains, right? You're only as, as, as great, you know, with that really kind of there. Uh, we're gonna play against Golds right now. We have the grade one, we have the grade two, we're comfortable with that. We don't really want to see the Daisha in the sec. PG is nice, and the Assault Monster Gunrock definitely does help you uh, push that grade 2. Oh, and we got the grade 3. This is perfect. This is a pretty, really good hand. A pretty, pretty good hand. Um, and we're going to see what we And we didn't draw into trigger. We got second grade. That's great. 
Eye of Destruction Zero. We're gonna get the Great Fiend. And this is actually a decent outcome because in most decks, you know, these, this right chain forces you to get that Great Fiend into your hand. Um, so in decks like Coral, at least you can put it into the soul to hit numbers. But, you know, in some other clans, like Duke, for example, if you have multiple Dukes in your hands, it doesn't really help, right? But here, well, at least you can Persona Blast with it and have some utility with the, with the option. Um, so that's definitely a very nice uh, skill that they added for Zeal and definitely does help boost its relevancy a little bit, a little bit more um, than, than, um, than it was in the TCG. So we're going to ride right away too. And since our opponent is reliant on the right chain, they are playing the right chain, we're going to kill the little starter and disable that option. Alright, so here, is there a reason to use the other options? Uh, not really, not really, no. We can keep that for later. So let's just go into battle right here. We hit the draw trigger, that's nice. We see a PG. Awesome, awesome. So one thing that uh, bothers me a little bit is that we have cards, sleeves that can be changed. Um, we have SPs, different rarities, but we don't have place playmat changes. Uh, if you are familiar with other Cartridge Vanguard games, we have you know Nintendo DS games, we have 3DS games, we have Switch games, and all of them give you the option to customize your your mat as well. And this is one of the options in the screen, but unfortunately it has not been implemented yet, which is a question mark. It's a question mark, you know, oh, why is it taking so long? It shouldn't be that hard. Um, but I guess it's a work in progress, and you know, some other games do, did consider having that option and then you know, just scrapped it. Maybe we'll see, we'll see other payments too. We're gonna ride Zeal, and it has its own animation! Polaris animation went, Bushi. Polaris animation went. So because we wrote it, and this is the only option, we get to minus 5k, uh, and then we, we're gonna play the... We can do this. Well, let's play Super Greedy. So this way, 6k hits. Our Vanguard will definitely hit. It's 11k. And our vanguards are taking second because, you know, 2 and 2, we want to pop our heals, right? And then this way, if our opponent doesn't hit trigger, we're hitting 10 plus 2. But unfortunately, they did. But that's okay. I'd rather keep my minus 2 options. Oh yeah, I have Persona Blast. I see, I see that. I see that. Push. Push. This way, we're not really investing a lot from our hand. We have the option, if our opponent has a trigger, we can do this, we can still attack. If we, if they didn't, well, we can attack for free. We don't really have to invest you know, these, these boosters too early, and we can still use them flexibly on the limit break turn to get rid of our opponent's pieces. And this is especially important against clans like Gold Paladin, which set up a lot of intercepts. Because generally the intercepts are going to be, you know, 8k, 9k, 10k. Um, in Gold Paladin, 10k is the biggest number for an intercept. Um, and so, yes, if you have a full board, you're minusing 6k. But you really do need uh, other skills to get reach that, you know, additional 4k to get rid of them, right? And this is when these cards come in. You place two of them, then yes, it's placing two units, you know. It's, it's quite a hefty cost, honestly. Um, but at least you, you can get rid of that. That's an option. And you can play around your points to you know, full board of intercepts and set up you know, multi on Vanguard attack um, strategies in your mid to late game. I'm gonna use this D. Bunny, Lucky Shooter, which means that they can fix their, their board and it's going to be useless cards like Vanguard 3 there. There's number break props to help them hit the 11k number. Let's check a draw trigger. I have a vein. Never really works pretty nicely with the easel right chain because you're after all after all you're putting a lot of cards into your soul. From does hit the heal trigger. I don't know if you'd want to put the heal trigger on the easel when you're playing the right chain, because then you'd be secure riding a heal trigger from your deck. Um, and we all know how important heal triggers are, or we should at this point. From does put this four, which means we can use limit break, but it's not the most effective right now. 
since they only have two rewards on their board. Maybe we'll save it for another day. Maybe we will have to use it to pick numbers. I don't know. We'll have to see what we draw here. Draw here three. I guess we can call it this. Decrease the power here so that both of my rear guards can attack. There is honestly not much utility in using the uh, limb break at this point because we can't even eliminate the rear guard properly. Um, and if we do, that's over investing, that's over extending. We don't really want to do that too early. Um, and we'd rather keep those pieces for later. We do hit a draw trigger there, really nice. And this way we are balancing the back 44. Point does check it. Crit. So because we know that the Gormor and the Ezo both have the heal trigger symbol on it, that means they don't have, uh, or at least at most they have a combination of, you know, four Gormor, zero Ezo, uh, four Ezo, zero Gormor, and in this case because they've shown one and one, at most three Garmor, one Ezo, or three Ezo, one Garmor, or two of each. Uh, and this is important to notice because, well, yes, perfectly tuned decks will have a perfect ratio of three grade threes and one one of. But some decks are incomplete, and you can kind of see, you know, the probabilities and how that influences the game as you play too. And this is definitely a deciding factor between a beginner, especially one without any complete deck, and a skilled player that can take advantage of this kind of information here as well. So our opponent C, again, makes a play, fills up their board, um, which is quite detrimental in this matchup, uh, so I would not recommend it. Uh, these grade twos don't really have utility anyways, so... We're gonna use the Daisha skill, eliminate it to get rid of uh, to get a grade one or grade two. Unfortunately, we get a grade one here. Well, that's okay. Uh, I'm considering calling this up. If I have a full board, we're minusing six k to our opponent's board. So should we get rid of two units? Okay, we can. So with this, we can get rid of this. And by calling this out, we're gonna get rid of this. Uh, there's no reason to use this skill. And we're gonna just limit break. Last two units. So here, we hope that our opponent doesn't have to heal, and if they do, then we lose, unfortunately. Um, point. And here, this is the part where we hope everything goes well, and uh, let's make something happen. And it does! Zeal goes in for the kill, blast him, and that will be game. So that's a very you know, luck-based uh, strategy at that end. But yeah, one thing that you really do need to know is that, well, it's not a definite case that your opponent has a PG. You always have to find a way to win. Um, and well, if you have to pray for a heal trigger next turn, you might as well pray that your opponent doesn't have a PG. Sometimes it's important to go for the wins uh, rather than hope for hope to not take the else. And I guess that's, that's uh, what you have to do sometimes when you're putting the pinch. Always remember your winning image. So I guess that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope we don't see any more zeals in our next pack opening. Uh, we will be opening quite a few packs, not as much as last time since I am a free-to-play player. It's really difficult to accumulate, you know, that many packs as much as last time, um, you know, every single month. But stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous pack opening, trust me, it's very entertaining. Um, zeals zeals everywhere and hopefully we won't see that next time uh, but yeah if you are interested in seeing my pack only first thing um on october 1st do subscribe so you can stay tuned 
If you like the video, like it. If you didn't like the video, don't like it. But let me know why as well, right? Let me know what I can improve on. Um, and lastly, what do you think about Zeal? I really don't like Zeal. I think Zeal um, spooks me too much. I think that, you know, that was just bad taste in my mouth. But definitely a deck that you can't underestimate and you can definitely pull out you know, some wins here and there. I guess that's it for today's video. And I'll see you all next time.